First Peter chapter 2, verse 17, for just a few minutes. It says, Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Amen. Amen. I want to look at the one part in particular for just a few minutes uh, this afternoon, that part there about fear of God. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because we're a congregation that um, believes when it says fear of God that it means um, fear of God. Right. I mean, that's that's the kind of congregation we are. Right. There are a lot of churches that take the phrase "fear of God" as to mean uh, respect God, and I would say no, it's it's fear of God. Amen. Amen, brother. Because if you if you think about the Old Testament, of course, if you've never read the Old Testament or don't believe the Old Testament, it would mean anything to you. Right. So you need to get in it. You need to study the Old Testament and see what the New Testament really refers to. Amen. Right, but when you read the Old Testament, you find that God is a God of judgment. Right. He's a God who has destroyed cities right. for less than what's going on in America today. Right. Amen. And uh, you find out that He's a God who let His own people lose many wars for less things than we do in America today. Amen. You'll find out that he's a God that cast his own angels, his right. own creation, cast right. them out of heaven. You'll find he's a God that created a pit called hell, where he's going to cast uh, uh, the evildoers, the wicked and evildoers, which, uh, and the uh, devil and his minions in it. I mean, it's a very scary thing, right? Um, you read the Old Testament, you find that he's a God that actually gave people diseases, amazingly enough. Amen. In the Old Testament, we find that he gave, uh, gave a few people leprosy. Amen. It wasn't that they called it somewhere. God actually gave it to them because they committed wrongs before right. the Lord. Right. Amen. And uh, you'll find in the Old Testament that there was a man that was swallowed up by fire just because he did not want to have a baby through his, through his um, brother's wife. Amen. When you read the Old Testament, you find that the, he's a really scary, fearful God. Right. You know, he is an awesome God. That's right. And when I say awesome God, I don't mean like awesome. I mean, he is an awesome God. He puts you in awe and yeah. wonder of all the things he could do. Amen. So we need to fear God. And that's what this church actually believes when it comes to fearing God. Right. Brother. Amen. That, hey, you know, he could take your life at any minute. But then again, he could add years to your life. Amen. Right. He could set back his hand as he did with Job and let you be tried by the devil, or he could push back that temptation if he wanted to in those tribulations. Right. He is a. We need to fear him for who he is. Right. right. Amen. You know, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful gift that God gave us when He gave us His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Wasn't that a wonderful gift? Amen, bro. However, right. let's look at it the other way. How right. horrible and fearful is it? That a God would give His own Son to die on the cross like that for strangers. Yeah. Amen? And if He allowed such judgment to come upon His Son for redemption of us, what makes us think, you know, that we're, we, um, that we're um, scourge-free, that we right. don't have to worry about it? That's right. But I don't want to preach that so much tonight. I just want us to under, uh, want um, anybody watching and remind everybody here that we do... Fear God. Amen? Right. Amen, brother. What I want to talk about this afternoon, though, is respecting God. Right. Amen? Now, we know that fear of God is more than just respect. More than just a healthy respect, as right. I've heard it put before. It's more than that. However, I do want to talk about respecting God for just a minute. For example, you know, we in the Christian realm, we get to do the Christian thing so much. You know, and church becomes church. Right. Prayer becomes prayer. Right. Reading the Bible becomes reading the Bible. Yeah, you know, and it, and it just becomes this common thing that we just do. It's just repetitive in nature. It's just a ritual. Yeah. It's just a tradition. It's right. just something we do. And, but we need to respect God. And we need to remember that, hey, this is church. Right. This is where God's children come to gather together. In one accord, in one mind, to glorify God, to praise Him, to give words of encouragement to one another, to practice the gifts of the Spirit, to prepare ourselves to go win more souls for the kingdom. Church is more than just church. 
Are you with me? It's more than just that. Come on. Reading your Bible is more than just reading your Bible. What I mean by that is when you read the Bible, you hear the words of God. Right. And you get revelations from God. He reveals things to you through the Scripture. It's amazing. I, I promise uh, if you get into Scripture and you start reading it, it's an amazing thing. You'll read a verse one day and it'll speak to you one way. You go to the same verse a week later and you find something you didn't see in that Scripture and it'll speak to you in some other way. It's, right. it's just amazing how the Bible is. We don't need the Bible to just become the Bible. We don't need it to be read the Bible. We need to be we need to understand it, read it, get fully into it. Really, really read the Bible because I personally believe and I believe most people do that we learn through history. Right? Right. What's the classic saying? We learn history so we don't repeat it. Right. Same thing in the Bible. We need to read and see what has happened, see where things came from. The Bible is God's infallible word. Right. Amen? That's right, right. Which basically means that none of this is wrong. And we need to believe it. We need to study it. We need to read it. Right. And it needs to be a precious thing to us. You know? It doesn't need to just be the Bible. It needs to be more than that. You know what's amazing is when Bibles find, it, find their way to other countries other than, other than America. Right. When these Bibles find their way over there. Yeah. Man, they don't look at it as being just a book that I read. They look at it as being the voice of God. It's, right. it's a treasure to them because it's, it is God's Word. Amen? Amen? So it doesn't need to be the Bible. It needs to be the Bible. That's right. Okay? Same thing with church. When we think about Jesus Christ, Amen. we in the church realm, we say Jesus. We say Jesus. We say Jesus. We say Jesus Christ. We say Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden we say it so much that it no longer has that deep respect that we should give to the word, to the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. We need to remember, hey, that this is our Savior. Right. This is not just Jesus. This is not just Jesus Christ. Right. This is our Savior we're talking about. Amen. This is the man who went through the persecution, went through the rejection, went through the punishment, went through all those things for us. It's the... Uh, it's, he is the Son of God. The only begotten Son of God. Are you right. with me? On, we bro. need to understand it. He is the, he is the uh, Jesus Christ is the physical manifestation of the third part of God. Amen? And we need to understand that. He's, he's our bridge to a new covenant. Amen? Um, <laughs> Bobby and, uh, Brother Bobby and I talk a lot of times about these people that believe that eventually we'll have to go back to sacrificing animals for salvation. We get to talking about that a lot. And uh, <coughs> and how silly a thing that is, being that we have grace. Amen. But we need Jesus Christ because, believe it or not, without Jesus Christ, if you read the Old Testament, you'll find we couldn't even sacrifice animals. Because that covenant was toward to the, to the Jews. That wasn't towards us. So we, we would have to be judged by our consciences. And I'll go ahead and tell you, if your conscience is anything like mine, uh-oh, I'm in a lot of trouble. That's why we need Jesus Christ. Amen? We need to understand that He is that bridge to the new covenant. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the reason we won't go to hell if we repent and believe in Him. Amen? We need to understand, hey, that's Jesus, man. That's not just Jesus. It's not just Jesus Christ. Amen? Right. That is Jesus we're talking about. We need to respect God. Amen? And we need to respect prayer. Let me talk to you about prayer just a minute, you know? Uh, I've caught myself in the last year, and I've tried to break out from it, and I'm having trouble breaking out from it. About When I pray during church, I have a set prayer. I pray with a little bit of twist in it. I have a little bit of one prayer that I pray at the eating table with a little bit of twist to it. I have a little prayer that I pray at night before I go to sleep with a little bit of twist on it. And our prayers don't need to be those ritualistic things. Right. We need to remember, hey, this is prayer. This is conversation. Okay? It, it, this is like conversation with your boss. Okay? This is like conversation when the wife is upset or the husband is upset. Amen? Right. This is deep, sincere conversation when we pray to God. Right. It is a one-way track from us to Him, knowing that there's no bystanders in between other than the Savior, Jesus Christ, who's already there. Amen? Amen Prayer is a sacred thing. Prayer is from where we get healing. 
Prayer is where we have our loved ones delivered from their wicked ways because we can pray for God to send the soul to go minister to them in a way that we cannot. Prayer is, 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 is very, very important. It's not just prayer. It's a conversation. We need to respect prayer. Right. And finally, you guys, we need to respect God. Amen. We need to respect that hey, God is the reason that we're here. He's our creator. I mean, that alone stands me in awe that He's the Creator. He created all these things and made them work in perfect harmony, you know? Right. That the atoms would fit together just right to make the elements, and the elements would fit just right to make the compounds that would make it work just right to make, you know, and on up the ladder. I mean, all that didn't happen by happenstance. That was God that created that. He was the, he was the Creator, the one that stuck all the planets up there in nothingness. Just a vacuum up there. And nobody knows why those things are there. They know they attract one another, but they don't know why it all just hangs there. You know? God created all that. God created it. And see, you, you really get into astronomy and physics and different things. You really start to see how amazing God is as the Creator. We also need to um, respect Him as our healer. Right. Come on, brother. That is where our healing comes from, you guys. I don't care if you have the best doctor in the world. If God doesn't want you healed, you're not going to get healed. I don't care if you have the worst doctor or no doctor. If God wants you healed, you're going to be healed. If your faith is there, you will be healed. That's right. Amen? Yeah, he's your provider. He's your healer. When you need things, when you need that money to feed your children, when you need whatever it is you need, you can go to Him because He is your provider. You need to respect God. Amen? And, I, I, you know, I, I, I kind of make fun sometimes when I use the expression God. But we need to actually look at God as being something more than just run-of-the-mill God. He's much more than that. Amen? He's much more than that. He is God. Amen? He's the judge. Uh-oh. He's the judge. When it's time for us to die... And it's time for us to meet our final judgment. He's the one we're going to have to go stand before and explain to him what, explain ourselves to him. That's Amen. Right, he is the one that we're going to that where every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. Right. Amen. He's the one who's going to say, "Get behind me, I never knew you." He's the one that's going to say, "You're going to hell." He's the one that's saying, "Come on in, my good and faithful servant." Amen. And he's the one that's going to say, "You're going to be on the outer gates." Amen. He is the one. He is the judge. He's omnipresent, omni omniscient. Amen. He's just amazing. He's just the, the greatest force that has ever been known. Amen. He's not just a fairy tale. He is God. He's, he's eternal. He'll never pass. He's a God that cannot be destroyed. Right. He's a God that will be here eternally. Amen. Right. Amen. He's God. And He's a God of forgiveness. That's the, that's the greatest one. Without Jesus Christ, it says, no one will see God. Without Jesus Christ, no one will make it into heaven. Amen? Right. It tells us <laughs> that, God died, that Jesus Christ died for us so that we can make it to heaven for forgiveness of our sins. Right. Amen? Amen? I know this has been a really, really heavy sermon this afternoon. I may have been preaching to the choir, but... As we go on this week, let's try to remember those things. When we pray next time, let's not let it just be a prayer. Let's remember, hey, this is a conversation with God. When we read our Bible, let us remember that it's not just a Bible. It's the Bible, amen? Right. Let us remember that when we, um, when we go to a church, it's not just church. It's God's church, amen? Right. When we think about all the spiritual things, let's not just think about, okay, it's that thing or this thing. Let's remember how important these things are to God. Amen? Right, brother. Amen. Well, that, Brother Bobby, you got a song for us? Yeah, I wish.